Are you all right? Are you going to die? All right, well, then maybe I should let you ask your question so you don't die. What's your question, darling? Well, come out here first of all so I can, everyone can see you. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> What's your name, sweetie? Scarlet. Scarlet. Oh, it's such a pity name. What's your question, darling? None of them. I'm kidding. Which which voice? Which voice? That's a hard question to answer. Back to the favorites game. You don't understand it anymore if you don't want to. But you do have to give me something. I'm kidding. <laughs> a skeleton arm. What is that? Can I see that real quick? Come back. Wait, wait, come back. Is this like a butt scratcher? <laughs> wait, I have a question. You could use it as one. Where did you get this is actually pretty cool. You don't know where you got it? You don't know where you got a black skeleton arm? <laughs> I think I love your life. <laughs> Someone's like, ah, yawn, it's a skeleton arm. I don't know, I just lying around somewhere. Awesome thing. Um, a favorite character, it's really hard. I'm an actor, and we're all a little psychotic. So when we play a character, like at least I say we, other, other, act, other actors are mostly very balanced, rational people. I am not. So this is all just out of my own mouth. Um, I get really attached to a character, even if it's like Soldier A in, a, in this or that show, who has two lines and then gets shot and killed. Like, freeze! Oh, I love that guy. And they all sort of become a permanent feature of my psyche. And, and like, all those 200 something characters all in there that I've played just in anime that are up there and they're kind of. I'm recording. Holiday, and, you know, we all do a big meal and everyone's screaming at each other over the turkey or whatever. And so it's this constant chaos of voices. All who gets control of my voice. So if I were to pick a favorite, just to answer your very sweet question, it is a very sweet question, I would go, uh, this character, just for want of an answer, and then go back to my hotel room tonight and face 20 characters that would be looking at me in my head going, you're a bastard. <laughs> Why didn't you choose me? So I try to avoid that and say, everything's my favorite. And, but it really is. I mean, these characters kind of are in there and part of your wheelhouse, what we call it, you know, your, 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 your family, your internal monologue. So sometimes I might be Sebastian on a given day that Sebastian's voice is going to get me through a particularly rough day. Just, I mean, I'm not even talking about acting. I'm just talking about just being out in public and going, I'm actually very shy says the man standing in front of all of you with a microphone. Um, I'm actually very, very shy, so I conjure up various voices and characters in order to just get through social uh, social exchanges every day. And sometimes it's Sebastian, and sometimes it's Lauren, sometimes... Um, but it's just it's just the idea, it's the character, it's what motivates them, that sometimes I can hide behind uh, a voice that is not my own. And so they're all, in one way or another, very, very important to me. It makes them awesome. To pick a favorite. I do have another funny Sebastian story. By the time I just decided to use that voice in public, I was in Oklahoma, which is just north of Texas where I live. It was a con. And I love going to cons. I love staying an extra day after a con because I love wandering around the hotel and the convention center and seeing the contrast. Someone outside? It's weird. I don't know what he's doing here. Um, it's actually pretty really badass. Um, so I just decided I love to. I love the contrast going around a convention space the day after the con has left the premises, and now you look around the hotel and the convention center, and like all the colorful cosplayers and enthusiastic fans are gone. And it's just salary men in business suits weeping into their open briefcases, wandering around looking for their rooms. It's really sad. The hotel goes back to normal, and I love looking around going. Next con, please, right now. But I wasn't quite, on this particular occasion in Oklahoma, I wasn't quite done being on. So I decided to have a little fun with the hotel staff, which had changed over. They were the staff that were there over the weekend, so they didn't see me or recognize me, so I'm like, yes, free reign, fresh victim. So I go to the concierge desk and just start randomly talking to this poor girl named Jennifer, her name was, in Sebastian's voice. 
And mind you, again, this is America, this is Oklahoma, where like, hey, how's it going? And so I'm like, hey, we're going to come to you. I wonder if we might be fine. A good place to get some steak or whatever. And she just looks at me and goes, uh-uh, no, stop it. What is that coming out of your mouth? Stop it. <laughs> and inside I'm thinking, yes, I've got her. Awesome. <laughs> So I just play it out. I'm like, um, I'm, I'm so sorry. Is the accent troubling to you? And some people don't always understand it in this part of the country. Um, I could slow it down or I could write it down. I'm just totally having fun with her, right? And she goes, what did I just say? Stop, Deborah, Deborah, come here, Deborah. Little girl, Deborah comes over. Hello, and I'm like, hello, Deborah, how are you? Back to Jennifer. Uh-uh, no, see, if you were my boyfriend and you talked like that to anybody else, I would kick your ass. So my voice is getting me into trouble. A lot. Seriously, I'm just a crazy man in a padded room making 